For centuries, the vast deserts, windswept prairies, and towering mountains of Central Asia formed an important part of the famous Silk Road trading route. Along this challenging terrain, battles have been fought and empires built, and cities dating back thousands of years still stand. And the Silk Road trading routes brought goods and people from east to west, north to south, and back again. Ideas and information flowed along these routes as well, and helped put Central Asia at the center of the trading world. But with the march of time and the formation of the Soviet Union, many of the once mighty countries of Central Asia dropped temporarily off the map. Now they're finding their way back, reconnecting with each other, armed with a new global vision. By 2001, four of the newly independent Central Asian nations, Kazakhstan, the Kyrgyz Republic, Tajikistan, and Uzbekistan, together with the People's Republic of China, had set out on a journey to turn their land-locked nations into land-linked economies. They were quickly joined by three more, Azerbaijan and Mongolia in 2002, and then Afghanistan in 2005. By 2010, with the accession of Pakistan and Turkmenistan, the partnership stood at 10. Joined through partnership in the Central Asia Regional Economic Cooperation Program, or CARIC, they began to take crucial and practical steps to create regional transport, trade and energy grids that connected their economies to each other and to the world. The CARIC countries are supported in their vision of seamless connectivity by six multilateral institution partners. Ten years after CARIC senior officials met for the first time, the program's defining vision of good neighbors, good partners, good prospects, is heralding a new era of economic cooperation and prosperity. From the remote deserts of Mongolia and the People's Republic of China to the bright lights of Baku, Kabul and the big cities between, there's a growing sense of dynamism. Soviet-era buildings are making way for modern office towers and a growing middle class is enjoying new freedom as well as the benefits of their revitalized economies. Over the past decade, Almost $17 billion has been invested in regional infrastructure projects through CARIC. Thousands of kilometers of road and rail have been built, and energy transmission lines deliver electricity to homes and businesses, where previously unreliable supplies had affected productivity, trade, and quality of life. CARIC investments have contributed a 12-fold increase in intra-regional trade during the past decade. But the journey is far from over. When CARIC started in 2001, poor quality infrastructure, difficult terrain and bureaucratic cross-border regulations were severe impediments to trade. Today, almost $13 billion has been invested in rebuilding road and rail links along six CARIC transport corridors. These corridors are improving conditions for regional travel and trade and will maximize access to major external markets by reducing travel time as well as the cost of doing business. The CARIC corridors have breathed new life back into the world's oldest trading routes and the results can be seen in the main east-west corridor linking Europe with Central Asia and the North-South Corridor linking East Asia, the Middle East and South Asia. On the new road linking Tajikistan's capital Dushanbe with neighboring Kyrgyz Republic. In the superhighways of Western People's Republic of China, such as the Kola Kuka Freeway and the new road to the Mongolian border. And in the rebuilding of Afghanistan's ring road network a critical part of the country's post-conflict reconstruction and economic restoration. The CARIC economies are benefiting from these improved transport corridors and reduced travel time, and so too are their citizens, including Uzbek truck driver Faizi Mukohama. 
This road has changed a lot for us. Thank goodness it was built. I'm traveling from the Baltics and from Europe, and this road is just as good as there. Tajikistan farmer Saeed Ibro Mirov. We used to take our produce to market. There was a lot of damage on the way. We lost up to 80% of our produce, and our cars were damaged. Now it's a good road. We can get our produce to market, sell it, and buy what we need to live, what our children need. Thank you for the road. Work on Karak Corridor 1 linking Europe to the People's Republic of China is benefiting entire communities in Kazakhstan. Local people used to be involved only in the agricultural sector. Now they have the opportunity to get involved in the construction work. We create jobs and regular salaries are paid. Karak has also invested in improving rail and sea connectivity. Aktau Seaport in Kazakhstan has been expanded and now handles 12 million tons of cargo a year. With plans to further increase capacity in the near future, Karak transport corridors, such as the Karak Regional Road Improvement Program linking Uzbekistan to Kazakhstan and Aktau, are helping get cargo to the ports faster and through streamlined export procedures. Across the Caspian Sea in Azerbaijan, work has begun on a brand new seaport complex that will create a direct link with Aktau. And from Baku, Karak Corridor 2 carries goods and people westward to Europe and north to the Russian Federation. At this rail workshop in Tashkent, Uzbekistan, workers are constructing state-of-the-art train coaches for upgraded railway lines that will link the country with its neighbors. By using improved technology developed here, rail travel is becoming faster and safer across the region. Afghanistan has completed a rail link in record time between its second largest city, Mazari Sharif, and the border with Uzbekistan. Central Asia is blessed with energy resources, but uneven distribution and inadequate infrastructure mean some countries continue to face shortages. The Nurek Hydro Power Plant in Tajikistan is the largest in the region, supplying more than 70% of the country's electricity supply. But silt and mud built up in the Vakhas River since the plant was constructed almost 40 years ago threaten to severely damage part of the dam. Karak projects instigated a cleanup operation. So the plant now operates more efficiently. In the Uzbek city of Karshi, Karak projects are underway at the Talimarjan power plant to improve the reliability of electricity supply for residential and business consumers in the southwest of the country. After years trying to balance energy supply and demand in Central Asia, there are now tangible signs of energy trade coming back. In 2009, the completed Afghanistan Emergency Infrastructure Rehabilitation and Reconstruction Project brought 660 gigawatt hours of electricity to energy-starved Kabul. And the Regional Power Transmission Interconnection Project between Afghanistan and Tajikistan built almost 300 kilometers of transmission lines across the Pianj River increasing power supply in Afghanistan by a minimum of 7 gigawatt hours every month. The rehabilitated transport corridors have improved physical connectivity among the Karak countries and this has resulted in greater potential for economic interaction. But turning these linkages into economic corridors where business can thrive remains a challenge. Once the roads are complete and the traffic is flowing, the Karak countries must help business people and traders move their goods across the borders faster and more efficiently. To that end, Karak governments are formulating arrangements for easier transnational movement of goods and people, such as the Cross-Border Transport Agreement, signed by Tajikistan and the Kyrgyz Republic in 2010. 
Such arrangements widen the appeal of Carrick corridors to business people in the region. At the busy Kyrgyz Republic-Kazakhstan border, a centralized single-stop system has streamlined customs declarations processing and other border control functions, significantly reducing waiting time for long-haul truck drivers and people in regular vehicles. It's a modern, efficient and quick process, and one that is being replicated elsewhere in the region. At Erenhot, the People's Republic of China's modern new border post with Mongolia is considered among the region's best. Mongolia, too, has made huge strides in customs modernization, including implementing the Customs Automated Information System. This system performs paperless processing and web-based transmission of customs declarations. It integrates rail and road customs procedures and uses improved testing equipment for foodstuffs and organic goods. In the future, it will also be able to share information, such as X-ray images, with customs counterparts in the People's Republic of China through joint customs control operations. Several years ago, Tajikistan's border with the Kyrgyz Republic was little more than a dusty mountainside track. Now the road is being widened and a new customs facility is in place. The border facilities are linked to a unified automated customs system in the capital, Dushanbe. Whether in energy, food supplies or manufactured goods, trade is critical to the region's future. Recognizing this, Carrick countries are working closely together to assess the region's trade regimes and recommend further policy options for reducing trade barriers, with the goal of having all Carrick economies achieve accession to the World Trade Organization. In November 2010, Carrick welcomed its newest members, Pakistan and Turkmenistan. Turkmenistan provides a natural extension of Karak Corridor 2. From the border with Uzbekistan to the shores of the Caspian Sea, Azerbaijan and ultimately the European markets. Transport corridors in Pakistan will focus on linking the landlocked Karak countries with the warm water ports of Karachi and Gwadar, expanding trade potential far beyond the borders of Eurasia. With the world's center of economic gravity shifting to the east and south, Central Asia stands at the threshold of immense opportunity. The journey that began a decade ago is as exciting as it is challenging. It is a journey toward a truly integrated and globally connected Central Asia, where countries tackle their challenges together, in common purpose, and forging strong partnerships for shared prosperity. Much has been achieved by the Carrick Partnership during their first 10 years, but much remains to be done to truly achieve the shared vision of good neighbors, good partners, good prospects. The future will see a reinvigorated Carrick program through a new strategy called Carrick 2020. Driven by focus, action and results to contribute to the Asian century and capture new opportunities for the people across Central Asia. And shaping a brighter destiny for generations to come.